the astronauts travel 240,000 miles in four days. From their tiny windows, they looked out on a world pockmarked by millions of impact craters. To avoid landing on rough ground, they aim for a large flat plateau known to generations of astronomers as the Sea of Tranquility. Okay, engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man. But the date was July the 20th, 1969. Man had taken his first step towards the planets. Over the next three years, five more Apollo missions landed on the surface of the moon. Only 12 men have walked there. The last man to stand on the moon was the commander of Apollo 17, Gene Cernan. Just the fact that you are there, you are on a, another body in our universe that is different, distinctly different, separate from our Earth, makes it overpowering. You know, here I am where no man has ever been before. Nobody has ever walked where I'm walking. No one has ever seen the mountains and the valleys and the boulders that I've seen. That makes it beautiful. That makes it special. The lunar surface is covered in fine powder. It's the legacy of billions of years of pulverizing impacts. Beneath the powder, most of the crust is made of ancient rocks formed when an ocean of liquid magma cooled over four billion years ago. Because the bottom of the core is not smooth, it's very jaggedy and fragmental-like. Nine, proceeded. Three, two, one. Ignition. Right away, Houston. That's your good. That's off. Apollo had cost America $24 billion. The American public was tired of paying for expensive manned flights. We were the last mission of Apollo. And I knew that I'd be the last man to have left my footprints on the surface of the moon. Uh, but I never believed ever that I'd be standing here over a quarter century later and still be the last man to have walked on a surface moon. I think in one sense it tells us what we have not done over the last 25 years as much as it tells us what we have done. Four days after leaving the moon, Apollo 17 safely re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. This was the end of the Apollo program the end of an era. Over a quarter of a century after the last astronaut left the moon, NASA launched an unmanned probe. In 1998, the Lunar Prospector probe was sent to detect any resources that might be useful if we ever wanted to return to the moon and build a permanent base. One of its tasks was to search for water by sniffing for hydrogen particles from a height of up to 100 miles above the lunar surface. Lunar Prospector spent nine months orbiting the moon, scanning every square inch. Its search was not in vain. As it flew over the poles, it detected hydrogen atoms, probably from water frozen below the surface. Lunar Prospector had found a resource that could revolutionize space travel. Ice is important because you can break ice into its component pieces. You can make ice into hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen are the primary components of rocket fuel. 
Most rockets are powered by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. If we could mine ice from the lunar surface, we could turn it into rocket fuel and use the moon as a launch pad towards the planet. If you would have the materials that you need in space, already in space, uh, you've saved a lot of money. So that makes the 10 billion tons of water worth trillions and trillions of dollars. And uh, nations have gone to war for a lot less. Lunar astronauts of the future could be mining engineers. The water ice that Lunar Prospector detected is most likely frozen underground in craters near the poles that lie in permanent darkness. It allows you to use the moon as a filling station. You can stop at the moon, you can use the ice to make hydrogen and oxygen and refuel your rocket and basically go anywhere you want. With this bonanza of cheap fuel, our descendants will be free to roam the solar system and search for the next planet that we might call home. At the end of its successful mission, Lunar Prospector was sent crashing into the lunar surface. When it struck, it was traveling at almost 4,000 miles an hour. The solar system is vast. There are nine known planets. The giant outer planets orbit billions of miles out from the sun. The human race has evolved by taking risks, conquering new environments. But sending astronauts out here will take generations. The only way we can visit these planets in our lifetime is by sending robotic probes. Inside the asteroid belt are the four rocky terrestrial planets. Mars, our home, Earth, and inward towards the Sun are just two planets we could try and visit. Venus and Mercury. Mercury orbits just 36 million miles from the Sun. Inside, it's made of 70% iron, far more dense than the Earth or the Moon. In 1973, NASA sent Mariner 10 to photograph the surface of this harsh and remote world. The pictures it sent back revealed that, like the Moon, its surface was heavily cratered, battered by asteroid and meteorite impacts over billions of years. With virtually no atmosphere to protect its surface, Mercury bakes at over 400 degrees Celsius in the day and freezes at minus 183 at night. Venus proved even more inhospitable. In the 60s and 70s, both the Soviet Union and America raced to find out what was hidden below the thick layer of clouds. Armored like a tank, the Soviet Venera 9 survived the descent through the sulfuric acid clouds just long enough to transmit a picture of its base sitting on the scorched rocky surface.